Eric said, my name is Molly McClurg. I'm the lead user experience designer at the advisory board company here in Austin, Texas. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about succeeding with conversational UI in the enterprise. Um, I'll make sure to leave time for questions at the end. So if you have any questions, just wait until then and we'll definitely go over those. Uh, so let's dive right in. Conversational UI frameworks um, can make building a chatbot or a voice UI easy when you're an independent contractor, if you're a startup, um, or just for a one-off marketing event. But when you have a big existing company with big existing organizations and departments that each have their own way of doing things, pitching and launching a conversational UI can be cross-functional at best and bureaucratic and political at worst. Uh, so in this talk, I'm gonna give you guidelines for repurposing and testing existing written content to be read by Amazon's Alexa Assistant. I'll also illustrate some pitfalls when pitching a conversational UI uh, and strategies for overcoming objectives and winning over stakeholders to help you create new and innovative things that will be embraced by your company. So first, we're gonna talk about flash briefings today. What is a flash briefing? Uh, this is our Alexa's news reading feature. You can choose different news sources to listen to through Alexa, like a personalized radio broadcast. Uh, you can also set the order in which you hear uh, those sources, such as NPR or The Daily Show has some comedy news as well. Users receive a flash briefing by asking Alexa-enabled devices, things like Alexa, give me my flash briefing, or Alexa, tell me the news, and you have to say it in that tone when you do it. Uh, Alexa either reads text content um, or plays audio content recorded by a human that is provided by each enabled flash briefing. So here's some examples of different flash briefing skills. Um, yeah, and flash briefings usually become a part of a customer's daily routine um, because news is updated daily. So either while they're getting ready for their day or winding down after a long day. So who are we? I work, I mentioned the advisory board company. We create healthcare products and best practices research uh, for hospital systems all across the U.S. And this is an example of what we publish daily. Individual news articles covering health industry news, and it's called the daily briefing. Not to be confused with a flash briefing. That was just a coincidence that our news articles were already called the daily briefing. Uh, the articles live on our website, advisor.com, and they're also sent in a daily email to subscribing customers. Our target users for the articles are users of our products and especially executives at hospital systems. We recently launched a flash briefing for Around the Nation, which is one of the daily briefings regular news articles that contain short state-based or region-based hospital and healthcare news. So I'm going to play for you guys now an example of our flash briefing. So if I had an echo right here, I would say, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. An advisory board healthcare news from around the nation, from Connecticut. Eastern Connecticut Health Network has named Michael Collins CEO, solidifying a position he has held on an interim basis since October 2016. Previously, Collins worked as ECHN's integration officer. From New York. The Bezos Family Foundation has donated $25 million to NYU Longoni Hospital, Brooklyn. The funding is intended to help NYU Longoni advance initiatives related to pediatric brain development, establish a partnership between the hospital's Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology and its Department of Population Health, and create new positions at the hospital to improve outcomes for children. So that's a sample of just a couple of articles from our flash briefing yesterday. So we made the app, um, but I alluded earlier to some challenges of creating a flash briefing uh, skill in a large organization. Um, so I wanna talk about how do we accomplish this in our organization, the advisory board. We started by contacting who creates the content for the daily briefing. These are the people who physically write and edit um, the articles. So here's an org chart um, for who writes our daily briefing. It's owned by the news team. You see their managing director down there at the bottom in green. 
Uh, so you might be asking, well, my, what's so hard about this? Just go and ask these people who write content to write content for your flash briefing or possibly even record it. Zoom out to massive impenetrable hierarchy. So this is just a fraction of our org chart at the advisory board. Um, way over there on the left, that's the news team. That's who creates the content for the advisory board. Um, in relation to us, the UX team, way over here on the right, that's us in the green. That's our managing director of UX. I'm not even on this org chart. I'm like four levels down. So that just gives you a sense of um, how big this organization is and how many people there are in it. So if you're in the same situation we are and you want to build something, but the people who can make it happen are way over there, you might just want to go around. And that's what our UX team did. Here are the, so I want to tell you a bit more about the steps we took with just two designers, me and my colleague Vittorio, who's in the back, I'm going to embarrass him right now, and a couple of junior engineers, um, how we moved from our daily web-based news to a flash briefing. First, um, we had to acknowledge the fact that we have no existing RSS or syndicated feed for the daily briefing, and two, we also have no support from the news team. Uh, so we decided the fastest way to create a prototype and get to launch was to externally scrape and re-host the daily briefing content for Alexa. As a result, editorial decisions needed to be made for the constraints that Amazon puts on flash briefing skills. For instance, what to do if our daily briefing has more than five articles. That's the limit that Alexa will read um, on a flash briefing. Uh, we also had to think about transforming content that was written for eyes to content that should be heard by ears. We also had to work within the constraints of how our daily briefing articles are written by the web team. Uh, we couldn't have them rewrite the articles because they said that they wouldn't do that. Um, so these decisions needed to be made in an automated fashion since they couldn't be made on a per article basis. So to create these editorial guidelines, um, I started by taking a sample of the, a daily briefing article and analyzing what it would look like with all the known flash briefing constraints uh, removed. So these are the things that Amazon yeah, absolutely makes you do to be able to um, put a flash briefing skill out there. For instance, um, headers, headlines, uh, they can't be read as complete sentences, so we had to remove those. We had to remove any calls to actions, buttons, and images. Uh, Alexa can't read an image to you, although that'd be pretty cool if someone wants to get on that. I think that'd be really neat. And um, it also limits any article to 4,500 characters. So I'm gonna play for you a sample of what one of our articles sounded like once we um, basically removed all of the known constraints from the article. So I'm gonna play that now. Senator John McCain, Republican Arizona, has been diagnosed with glioblastoma, a form of brain cancer, according to a statement from Mayo Clinic released by McCain's office Wednesday. McCain's office said he would determine when to return to the Senate based on consultation with his medical advisors. McCain last Friday underwent surgery at Mayo Clinic Hospital in Phoenix to remove a blood clot above his left eye. According to the hospital, subsequent testing showed that a glioblastoma was associated with the clot. A glioblastoma is an aggressive tumor that can be difficult, if not impossible, to treat, Mayo Clinic said. So we quickly came to the same conclusion that a lot of you just did as well, um, that no one, especially our target user of executives, wants to listen to an article that long. Um, so to combat this listening fatigue, I turned to automated text summarization. I ran different daily briefing articles through existing summarization tools. Uh, there's a bunch out there like at text teaser, summary, automatic text summarizer. Many of these have promise, but a lot of them haven't been um, supported or they're no longer functioning. They're long lost relics of student projects that just didn't get our job done. Um, so a little bit about summarization. Most of the existing tools for summarization rely on extraction method, which is picking out key terms and their corresponding sentences from the text that already exists. Um, here's a couple of tools that do that. So pulling out sentences that are already in that article versus abstraction summarization or paraphrasing the source document. An example of this is 
you know, you went and read a book, Mike, and then I asked you to summarize it for me because I didn't want to read it. I just want to know what it's about. So you would write a summary in your own words. That's abstraction summarization. Um, and there's a ton of research on natural language generation technology. So how to do a summarization in that manner. Um, automated through an automated way but at this point it's just that it's research and so it's not very useful for us at this point in time um, with the resources we have at hand uh, the algorithms that each of these tools uh, use for extraction summarization quickly became clear as i put articles into them uh, they were pretty straightforward algorithms like pull the first sentence of the article pull the last sentence of the article and then the first sentence of each uh, paragraph in between. And this led to some pretty incomprehensible summarizations when read aloud by human or Alexa. Here's an example of one. Uh, so this is, I ran an article through a summarization tool and it spit out these two sentences. The researchers found drinking artificially sweetened drinks and the researchers found that the relative incidence of stroke among participants who drank artificially sweetened beverages um, so I know something happened with researchers, but I was just plopped right in the middle of this article without much context of what's going on, which is really important when someone with no previous knowledge of the article is listening to it. So through analysis of these summary tools and the articles themselves, it became apparent that our, our articles were already written more or less in the inverted pyramid journalistic style um, and the most sense was to be made of the first few sentences. Um, also, after having read Alexa read countless articles out loud to me, I started to get a sense that my attention maxed out between three or four sentences. That's what you experienced a minute ago when listening to that article. So with those two things in mind, I created some summarization guidelines. Um, first is to truncate the article to the first three sentences. So we moved on to analyzing the effectiveness of truncating articles to the first three sentences. Uh, there's an example of that here, of a recent article that was published yesterday. The humans writing this article already crafted an introductory and comprehensive sentence. The user gets most of the information they need in just the first sentence. And then the next two are supportive contextual information um, here, quote from the subject of the article to give that first sentence more context. So after truncating 25 articles to the first three sentences, that led to even more editorial decisions that we needed to make. Um, the next one that I made was, if the third sentence includes a bulleted list, truncate to the first two sentences. Inclu um, how to handle bulleted lists in the original content. Uh, this may seem a little strange, but this is definitely a favorite of our BuzzFeed article nation, something that you might encounter when making a uh, flash briefing as well. And the way these bulleted lists are written, Alexa won't cut off after the third sentence. Like Alexa thinks that all of this bulleted list is the third sentence and it'll read it all as one sentence. So I'm gonna play an example of how this article sounds for you um, with the bulleted list included. Fortune has released its list of leaders who are changing healthcare, which includes luminaries and admired executives working on issues ranging from regenerative medicine to social determinants of health. Fortune categorized the 33 leaders on its list as advocates, corporate innovators, discoverers, disruptors, risk takers, or visionaries. Kathy Giusti, the founder of the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation and creator of what Fortune describes as the most successful patient advocacy model on the planet, one that, importantly, gets patients, researchers, and industry to sit at the same table. Peter Hotez, Dean of the so if I had let that keep going, I would have read all 33 of those leaders and their corresponding biographies, uh, which again, would have been way too long. So um, here's, oops, sorry, here's how the article sounds when we programmatically identify the bulleted list within the first three sentences and truncate the article to the first two. Fortune has released its list of leaders who are changing health care, which includes luminaries and admired executives working on issues ranging from regenerative medicine to social determinants of health. Fortune categorized the 33 leaders on its list as advocates, corporate innovators, discoverers, disruptors, risk takers, or visionaries. 
Another editorial decision uh, we made was how to handle really short summarized content. So sometimes truncating to the first three sentences resulted in very short articles, less than 400 characters, likely a result of a human's writing style. They probably just wrote short sentences. Uh, we added in the next fourth sentence for clarity when the first three sentences were less than 400 characters. So now we're starting to see that 4,500 characters is a little too long to be listened to by the human ear, but 400 is likely too short for the context of the full article to be relayed. So here's an example of this article truncated to the first three sentences. Providers increasingly are focusing on the social determinants of health to rate and health care spending associated with so-called super utilizers. Sarah Varney reports for Kaiser Health News. Super utilizers are patients with serious illnesses who visit the hospital and ed frequently. They tend to be uninsured or enrolled in Medicare or Medicaid. And here's that same article when we add in the fourth sentence for more clarity and context. Providers increasingly are focusing on the social determinants of health to rate and health care spending associated with so-called super utilizers. Sarah Varney reports for Kaiser Health News. Super utilizers are patients with serious illnesses who visit the hospital and ed frequently. They tend to be uninsured or enrolled in Medicare or Medicaid. According to KHN, super utilizers account for just 5% of the U.S. population but 50% of health care spending. We also created guidelines for important punctuation that is not currently covered by the Amazon Alexa design guidelines. You can find those on their site. Uh, for instance, ampersands, this is a fun one. Um, if Alexa hits an ampersand in your article, it just stops reading, just stops. And that happened after we published our uh, daily briefing. So you have to replace the uh, ampersand with the word and. Um, colons can remain and function as commas or semicolons. Commas and semicolons are accounted for in the Alexa um, design guidelines right now, but colons function as short pauses as well. And content for Alexa won't read quotations different than regular text, so we decided when uh, quotation contains more than two words, so three or more, uh, we, replace the word, we replace the quotation marks with the words quote for the set, first set of quotation marks and the word unquote for the second set of quotation marks. So I'm going to play an example for you of a sentence um, that is not using this rule first. A routine cataract surgery for a 67-year-old woman turned unusual when medical providers found a bluish foreign mass that turned out to be 17 contract lens bound together, and then fished out another 10 lenses in the same eye, according to a write-up of the case in the British Medical Journal. That's my favorite quote ever. Um, so now I'm going to um, play, uh, you heard just a straightforward sentence, but Ask yourself, do you gather different information when you hear this version that I'm about to play, including our uh, quotation guidelines? A routine cataract surgery for a 67-year-old woman turned unusual when medical providers found a quote, bluish foreign mass unquote, that turned out to be 17 contact lens bound together, and then fished out another 10 lenses in the same eye, according to a write-up of the case in the British Medical Journal. So the rules around when to imply this particular guideline, I definitely think could be pushed further to eliminate the words quote and unquote uh, when quotation marks are followed by the word said or says. We have a lot of indicators in our language, when we our written language, um, to indicate, hey, this is a quotation. Uh, so that's an example of how we could definitely push these guidelines further. Okay, so we have guidelines, we have a plan in place. How do we get to launch? That's still the big question here, right? How do we work around that situation that another team still owns the distribution of this content and not us? In an org chart where peer executives of the two departments uh, don't have a relationship, the only way to resolve that problem is to go to their mutual boss. In our company, it's that tiny gray square at the very top, the CEO of the advisory board company. How are you gonna get some time with the CEO to ask him questions about your Alexa chatbot? It's not gonna be easy. So I'm gonna walk you through a few best practices for getting buy-in other ways. Um, going around a team and doing work on your own can be seen as stepping on toes or even infringing on someone else's turf. 
you'll need to walk a fine line between getting something done and getting on someone's bad side, which if that happens means you'll never get anything done again. Consider relationships at your company that you already have, uh, people who you can communicate your goals to and may be able to help you get the answers you need. I leverage relationships with people that I knew used to be on the news team uh, to get the answers that I needed. However, this only worked up until a point until that person no longer had the answers um, at the higher level questions that I needed. So you gotta always be thinking about, you know, walking that line between using the resources you have and, and stepping on other people's toes. There is an education aspect with this as well. Um, if that other part of the org that um, you're trying to get buy-in from has never even thought about conversational UI at all or in general, you can't just pitch them an Alexa app. You have to pitch them the entire concept of what is voice UI? Who is Alexa? That's definitely a question that you will be asked. You have to be prepared to speak to all aspects of the project when seeking buy-in from various people. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt is a traditional marketing tactic. Uh, if you're familiar with you know, old school business and marketing, you may have heard of it. It's a strategy to influence perception by disseminating negative or false information and a manifestation of the appeal to fear. So this technology is new and unknown, and we don't like new and unknown things as human beings. Uh, so executives or other stakeholders may default to this to keep your project from happening. Uh, this is where we made sure we were prepared with our functioning prototype. We had that on hand. We had documentation um, on how we were editorializing their content, and we presented holistic education on the technology in a clear and consumable fashion to our targeted audience. So think about who you're presenting to. We also use selling around. This means one-on-one -on -one education with everyone around that person you're trying to get buy-in from, other executives um, and peers of the person who's buying you're trying to get. Use, again, use relationships you have and make new ones. Last year at the advisory board, we hired a managing director of UX uh, to help us build those relationships. And we leverage her relationships at the executive level to demo the actual app on an Echo dip Dot to those people. She invites people at all levels to these demos, executive assistants, uh, entire teams. There's real value in building excitement and getting buy-in at all levels. So eventually you will build up buzz. This happened for us and we got the okay to launch a limited pilot. We chose to launch our flash briefing with the Around the Nation articles. Those are those sub articles written by the news team. Uh, they're already a few sentences long, so we didn't have to use the summarization guidelines. Um, and this was pleasing to more parties because we were using the exact words written by their team. This gives concerned parties time to experience the UI themselves and hear their own writing audibly. They'll, they'll sense some of those things that I presented for you earlier. So I'm proud to announce that now everyone's mostly on board at the advisory board. Uh, processes at our organization are changing as a result of all the efforts I just told you about. The news team's changing how they write articles. They're finding a balance between articles that can be, zoom, uh, be consumed visually and audibly. Our future plan is to create a custom skill with a human recorded um, articles uh, that we can play through our flash briefing. And any person with the Amazon app on their iPhone, an Echo Dot or an Echo, you guys too can add the advisory board daily briefing uh, skill via your Alexa app. So I encourage you to add it. Um, and all of the examples that I just showed you, as well as many other editorial guidelines um, that we came up with for the Alexa app are publicly available now. You can find them on our UX site. It's here, ux.crimsonservices.com. I'd also, all of us would really love to hear from y'all if you use these guidelines or if you can improve on them. Um, so feel free to reach out to us at amazondevadvisor.com. Uh, that'll come to me and Vittorio. And thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. We probably have time for like one question. So who's got a really good one for Molly? Nobody. How about you, sir? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, here we go. Hi, great presentation. Thank you. Um, if you were thinking about um, 
reorganizing your company, if you had the capability to do that to um, embed chat services more effectively, how would you do that? If I was gonna reorg my company? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I would reorg it around chat services in particular, but if I was, I would definitely, um, you know, I'd want more alignment between the people creating written content and our UX team in particular. I mean, like I said, I think, and that's why I was really excited to present this stuff to you guys today. I think a lot of people think, oh, a flash briefing, that's easy. Like you just run some existing news through this app and it'll speak it out loud. But hearing texts and reading written texts are so different. And I think that's something that people can only really internalize once they hear it. Um, so I would definitely have the, and I think the user experience team uh, can help you know, demonstrate a lot of that. So I would definitely make sure that our news team and our UX team was more aligned and probably also our marketing team in general as well. Cause that's the other big step I didn't talk about. It's like, this is live, but we haven't gotten on the same page about how we're gonna market this, how we're gonna get it out to our users. That's still to be determined. So maybe I'll come back once we have some successes there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Just give me a second and I'll put that away. Uh, yeah, I'll check the Yeah. 